All right, folks, hello and welcome back. And in today's video, we are going to see if we can do something a little more interesting with a tile device. Now, for those who don't know, tile devices, they're a device by the company Tile that you can buy. They're trackers. You can hook them to your keychain. You can put them in your wallet. You can tie them to the, or tape them to the back of a laptop or something so that you can, anything that you lose, you can find by using your phone. It actually connects via Bluetooth to something in the tile to make it make noise. You can also actually use it to track like your phone and things like that from a, from a distance. Um, I'll show you the way that this thing kind of works. So basically this, this is an open tile that we'll get into in just a second, but it's hooked up to my tile app. And if I hit find, you'll hear it in a minute. There it goes. It's, it's singing a nice, beautiful little song for us. So it helps you find things. So one of the problems that we have here is we have this remote control that it's for an Apple TV. It's not the original one for the Apple TV, though. The original one we have actually, it didn't get lost. That would be kind of ironic if that was what this is for. But it got, you know, we spilled something in it and stopped working. Bought a cheap replacement off of uh, Amazon for like six bucks. It doesn't quite work the same way, but it is bigger. And it's one of the reasons that this is going to work. But my son loves to play with this remote. And he constantly will grab it and throw it in his toy bin or put it somewhere that we can never find it when we need it. So my idea was originally to open the thing up and kind of get the tile device to go inside of here. Now, that's why I, I broke this one apart, and you will see in a minute. I broke it apart, and I made it so that it would fit as small as it possibly could inside of this remote. I cut away a little bit of the trim piece of the, the row on the side so it would fit. Unfortunately, it still isn't quite small enough that it will close, and I have to tape the thing shut because it just doesn't quite close all the way right around the seams it doesn't it won't finish closing on on both sides because it's just a little bit too big so what i figured i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try to take this thing apart and wire it directly into the battery on the remote to lower the the width of this thing by just a little bit and hopefully that'll be enough to actually slide it in here and make it work uh, so I can close the remote and everything like that. I don't know what it's going to do to the battery life since the same battery is going to be used on the remote. I do know these things are the ones that theoretically do not have a replaceable battery in them. Uh, you're supposed to just recycle them and buy new tiles when that's the case. You can open them up, as you can see, and replace this battery, but they do have some expiration. The newer versions of them don't have this expiration, as far as I understand, and you can actually replace the battery. But these are some of the original tiles that we had lying around. This is actually one that it did expire and I tried to replace the battery and it won't come back online. And I think it's because once they're expired, it's dead. So I don't know what this system's going to do. But for those who want to know how to open up a tile, it looks like this. I basically just, it's not a pretty job. I uh, i just cut around the edges with a uh, with a little putty knife and pried it and pried it and pried it until it came apart. And it's really that easy. It's actually a nice little package that they have this thing in. Uh, the battery, separate down here. These batteries, in case you are wondering, are the... Let me get the, the reading for it. The uh, CR2025s. There you go. If you can see CR2025 on here, three volt uh, cells. The one in my remote is not the same one. This is the one that comes with my remote. It is a CR2032. Apparently, they're the exact same, except for these ones are a little bit wider. The 2032s are wider than the uh, 2025s. Uh, so it should still be able to work. If you do this yourself, keep in mind. The way that this thing makes sound, which I did not realize, if I just hooked the battery up to this right now, even if this one was functioning like this one, it would not actually make any noise because the speaker is actually this guy right here. And it's very tricky because when this thing is packaged together properly, there's two prongs at the edge of where it goes in. These two right here that make contact with the speaker so this one makes contact with the outer ring of the speaker this one makes contact with the inner part of the speaker uh so you actually have to remove the speaker out of here it's just a little flat thing uh with like a little flat screwdriver or tweezers or whatnot and uh and make this thing make the contact that it needs to make as you can see i'm peeling it out pretty easily I'll show you how paper thin this thing is there we go just paper thin speaker uh but it won't work unless you actually hook it up. I found that out the hard way by first putting this all in the remote and realizing it didn't make any noise and I didn't understand why. So this one is a not working one. This one 
is, however, a working one. And hold on, I'm going to get my soldering iron warming up here. So this is the one I had in the remote, and I have the speaker taped down to where it needs to go. That's going to stay, but I do need to remove the battery, which does have some tape on it because of the way I did this tape job. And it's got a little sticky residue in general on it. So I want to try to keep the speaker in place. This come back off. See if I can... Ah, oh, there we go. I got the battery out of that tile. So hopefully that's still in the right place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take... On this remote, as you can see, this is going to go to the bottom of the button cell battery, and this is going to go to the side of the button cell battery. And for these prongs, the way that the battery ends up sitting in here, as you saw, it was like this. The This is connected to the, it makes contact with the bottom of the battery, and this piece right here makes contact with the side of the battery. So let's just solder this thing up with some wire and see if we can solder it right to these connections on the board and make this thing all work off of one seamless connection. There we go. Wires are all tinned up. Might be. This one's a little bit long. And I am using red wire uh, for both of these connections. Uh, I would not highly suggest that. I would suggest you try to use a black wire and a red wire or two different colored wires if you if you possibly can. But it's what I got. So it's what we're doing. Let's see if we can get this thing to connect right to here. These boards are very soft. Oh, I'm removing the whole component. There we go. You got to be careful. I uh, I hope that's still making the connection where it needs to make the connection because I removed the entire uh, service mount component when I was doing that. So hopefully it's still it's still okay. Hopefully you don't run into that problem with this one too. Okay, that seems that seems like it's connected. Let's quickly take a look at this guy. I don't want to have too much excess wire going on here, um, but I want enough to be able to put it in a position that I want it in. Okay. Okay. Connections are made. I'm gonna flip the soldering iron off. Let's let's see very quickly if I can. Place this back in its housing. Sorry, I should be doing this on camera. Put this back in its housing here. Line up with the holes. Uh, in theory, it won't matter which direction it is now. I've got a little, I've got some excess wire, it appears. I uh, definitely didn't need to have as much as I do. Oh, connection came loose. Soldering iron back on. I should have done this in the first place. Actually measured where I want this thing to sit and then gone through and go ahead and... Uh, and cut. That would have been a much smarter way to do it.
This is my place. A lot of there. Let's see if I can go to the position here. I don't care if I'm using your hands with stuff, you guys. It's really hot. There we go. And that should go seamlessly around that screw hole. We will find out. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Hopefully that mounting hole is good. That looks like a great position for it. It feels like it's held in. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together. Mounting hole, mounting hole. Oh, there is a... That's a button. Hopefully that doesn't do anything. Okay, so that's in fine. Let's for... The sake of it, put the back cover back on. Man, it's still, still is a little bit big. I think it's actually because what I really want is I want it to be, ah, came off again. Uh, you notice here I cut I trimmed out some of the interior pieces here I think it's now sitting up here a little bit more uh, so I'm just going to take away some of the some of the excess support and yes I know I have to solder it back on I just want to see if this is going to make it fit better in the in the spot it is in. Yeah, definitely. That definitely will fit perfectly now uh, that I cut out that support. Uh, I don't know if you can see. If only I didn't have to open it back up to resolder it. Does that should be easy. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that is sitting in here nicely. Uh, there are some screws to go back on there, but what do we have to do is I have to hook up this the battery back in. Before testing the remote, I got the battery in here. Now let's try to, you know, find... Uh oh. Oh, there we go. There we go. Because it went to notify me when it's found. Now I found it again. There we go. So, this is now connected to the battery of the remote. Let me put some screws back in the back of this battery. Uh,. And no longer using its own battery, so therefore it is a lot more, a lot lower of a profile in here. Now the other thing we have to do is I have to go down and actually see it work. There, there we go. It is now, I no longer have a gaping hole. Uh, it does, I have a little bit of a, a gap right here, uh, but that actually gap just pushes down. I think it's because this remote's been broken a bunch of times, so I probably just need to keep some tape on there or some glue on there to, to hold it together. Uh, but it's no longer just a gaping gap because of the fact that there's that extra battery in there. So hang tight. I'm going to run down to the TV. We're going to test out if this thing is all still working. All right, so here we go, down at the TV. Here is the remote, and I will aim it. And there we go. It is functioning now. All buttons are appropriately working. Fantastic, and let's make sure that, that it still works here with the find. Using what? I'm trying to use multiple hands here and
There we go. Beautiful. So, this was a success. I have this connected with a tile inside of it. Like I said, need a little bit of a tape to hold that together, but it's no longer just bulky because of the fact that it was bulky. Again, this is not a remote, the original one that came with the the Apple TV. That one is much smaller. You probably couldn't do this, but this is an aftermarket remote uh, that I bought from Amazon to replace the other one. But you could also do this to any other device that you have. You saw how to take this thing apart. You can wire it up to those batteries uh, as long as it's three volt signal coming in. I don't know the longevity of this, but it is working for now, and I'm going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for another Fix It video.